Hi, this is Ryan Alexander with Denison Yachting. Just a handful of days ago in the south of France, in Cannes, we were invited to shoot a walkthrough on board a boat that I consider to be one of the most perfect yachts ever built. And I'm not the only person who feels this way. There are several people throughout the industry that believe that Cantieri Del Marquet builds one of the most complete and best boats in the world. And this particular yacht won best interior for any boat under 299 gross tons at the 2019 World Super Yacht Awards. Unfortunately for me, we weren't able to get her off the dock, so I couldn't shoot my normal drone footage. But fortunately for you, we were able to source some drone footage, as well as some stills of her out in the water. Part of CDM's Nada Air 110 series, Mimi La Sardine is a showstopper. Every single inch of this boat is intentional. From her seaworthiness to her unparalleled beachcomber interior, finding things to love is an easy task. If the goal of the builder is to translate the owner's vision into a realized dream, it's hard for me to see Mimi La Sardine as anything other than some sort of objective perfection. So without further ado, we're going to kick off today's walkthrough on the Sun Deck, just one of the many impressive outdoor venues that we're going to take a look at today. And we're going to do it with a little bit of help from my wife. Let's start aft at the Jacuzzi. Its centerline placement left room for the design team to creatively add sun pads on either side that convert into dinettes. The view from up here is as stunning as it is inviting. It's more than symbolic that in every direction you look, there are new places to discover and cultures to experience. And this is the perfect place to be on lookout. When you hop out of the jacuzzi, you can set down your towel to dry out and make your way towards the bar. This fully loaded wet bar is on the starboard side. Outboard is a grill and there's plenty of storage and refrigeration just under the bar. The hardwood bar top has a live edge reinforcing the natural and organic feel that you'll come to expect throughout the yacht. I also love the use of rope and carpentry that we see here in the seating. Looking now to the port side, we see alfresco dining that actually turns into even more seating and lounging space as you walk forward. The foremost bench would be a fantastic place to take a nap on a windy afternoon underway. Here on the sun deck, whether you're below the hard top or under the sun, it's obvious that less is truly more. Leaving here, let's step down a level. As you can probably tell by the look and feel of the bridge deck aft, this would be a dream venue to dedicate time to bettering yourself. You can get in an early workout and then eventually make your way through a few more chapters of that book. Back here is an Opak Mare Davit for recovering your tender. And then, as the rest of your guests get moving, you're just a few steps away from where you'll meet for breakfast and discuss the day's adventure with your captain and guests. This all takes place under a gorgeous hardtop. There's also a day head around the corner on the starboard side. In addition, we have walk-around side decks that lead to the foredeck, which we're gonna revisit in just a few minutes. Moving forward, we get our first look at her award-winning interior. The brief from the owner was simple. She didn't want any space on this boat to look like it was sourced from a magazine. Some things were to feel like home, and some were to remind you that you're not. We'll get into more specifics in a few minutes, but if it's on this boat, it's here on purpose. There's a gorgeous round walnut table and a wet bar that are forward on the port side. I love how apparent it is that there isn't a single space on board that's built around a bar, and you don't see this very often. If you like what you've seen here in the Sky Lounge, I promise it only gets better. Sticking to starboard and heading forward brings us into the wheelhouse, which is as state-of-the-art as it gets. Configured around four monitors and an intense complement of electronics, the 110 CDM is as capable a trans-Pacific vessel as any other on the water. Because of her robust engineering and the stringent demands of arena classification, there's virtually no location on Earth that's out of bounds. Outside of the wheelhouse are wing stations, each with its own complete set of ship's controls. 
As we step onto the bow, you can see that it's a split level foredeck, forming two distinct spaces. On the top level, we have a jet ski just behind a sun pad. Because this area was designed for guests as well as crew, it's nice that the ground tackle is on a completely different level. Guests won't feel like they're in the way when they're up here. Now let's head down to the main deck by way of the Sky Lounge staircase. Let's start aft on this deck. Just a few steps outside of the salon is a seating area. On almost any 110, aft deck seating would likely be a settee that faces forward towards a set of doors. This throws off the flow of what could be one of the most open and usable parts of a yacht. You have a boat because you want to be looking at the water, not your boat. Up here, you're in contact with life on board and life in the water. The configuration that you see here reclassifies this as more of an aft villa than anything else. The upper aft deck is connected to a large swim platform, much more substantial than others because it isn't annexed from the rest of the boat. There's a centerline hydraulic teak beach that offers a multi-tiered experience, which means that everyone can be down here at the same time, even if you want to stay dry. This area is also used for tender storage when you're en route from point A to point B. When you combine all these elements, they transform the way that you'll talk about a beach club. And one of the things that makes this configuration work so well is the garage. It can be accessed centerline under the stairs or on the starboard side. This area is used for more than just storage. In addition to housing water toys, this is also where we find an auxiliary generator and the ship's laundry. Forward on the other side of a watertight door is the engine room. This 110 CDM is powered by a pair of reliable CAT C18 engines that provide over 1,900 horsepower. With a 12-knot cruise, she has a stunning 7,500 nautical mile range, making her more than Trans-Pacific. So now we're gonna take things up a notch and we're gonna step into the salon. Now the salon was an essential piece of the puzzle for CDM as they tried to incorporate the familial elements of an old beach hut. Venues like a beach hut are places that aesthetically develop over time. Shells you find on walks, inspiring lengths of driftwood, years and years of collecting different things on your routine sunrise walks. This is why they went with primarily walnut joinery. It was sourced from a demolished 19th century house and plays an essential role in contrasting the ship's elegance with its spirit of exploration. The walnut is paired with oak on both the floor and the ceiling. You can set down your latest artifact on the woodwork without having the second thought that you're not supposed to do that on a yacht. A personal favorite part of the salon is the desk that bridges the gap between the interior and the aft deck villa. I can't imagine sitting down here to write and not finding something to say. The brass metalwork found everywhere throughout the interior was the obvious choice to make due to the enchanting way that it patinas. All of the experiences and trinkets gathered along the way and found throughout the boat are how you keep track of time when you're on board. This is also why all of the furniture and upholstery are tactile and organic feeling with every element leading you to the past. So this may be why you feel uninspired when you see the stereotypically posh designs long associated with yachting. Everything in those spaces just serves the spaces. On board Mimi La Sardine, it's a lot different because it's filled with organic, tactile things. Even without anyone on board, this boat has life in it. Forward on the port side is the galley. It's one of the very few spaces on board which is purely about function. It's as well equipped as the wheelhouse. The crew quarters are accessed through the galley, but we have to skip those for today. Continuing forward on the starboard side brings us once again to the central staircase. This is one of the first areas a guest stepping on board will encounter, and like the hundreds of industry leaders stepping on board throughout the show, it's a feature that stops you in your tracks. This brings us to the dreamiest place on board, the On Deck Master. I swear if you look closely enough, it speaks for itself. The Master breaks a big rule of yacht design. 
it wastes space. Here on the port side, there's no utility. It only serves as part of the traveling atmosphere of expedition. It's for the found things that don't fit on a shelf. And then there's the ensuite. This is nothing less than a five-star spa. Here we see that the brass is doing its job perfectly. Let's head down another level using the central staircase. This elegant floating step design removes the barrier that's typically found between the decks. Your guests below won't feel isolated or annexed. Starting in the port forward stateroom, it's clear that these guest accommodations played a big role in her winning best interior. But even more importantly, each room is warm and welcoming. This one has a twin berth layout with an additional Pullman berth, as well as a large ensuite. Opposite in the foyer is another stateroom, this one with an offset Marine Queen and another Pullman berth. Moving aft through the lower foyer and into the starboard stateroom is an island berth with a workstation. To the sides of the berth are nightstands with plenty of storage all around. And aft is the ensuite. The cabin opposite to port mirrors the last stateroom. In here are all of the design elements that we've seen so far on today's walkthrough. Each fitting and found thing are worth noticing, no matter which stateroom you're lucky enough to find yourself waking up in. It doesn't matter which journey you're setting out on, we all hope that we don't lose our way in the process. It doesn't much matter whether you're designing a super yacht or exploring a foreign shore. This is the very spirit of expedition finding yourself in the pursuit of something bigger than you. This spirit and the clear direction of both owner and builder place an emphatic period on today's walkthrough. In case you can't tell, I absolutely loved this boat, and I'd love to know what you think in the comment section below. If you have any questions about CDM or if we can help you through the buying or selling process, we'd love to do that, so feel free to reach out at any time.